Hi there, this is Jaime, and today we are going to talk about images for your blog and how to find and use them properly. But first, let's talk about why. So the number one reason why your website or your blog is really slow to load, maybe for you or for your audiences, it's usually because you have very large images and it's taken up a lot of the memory that it requires for it to render that image to your viewers. Or there could be other reasons why your blog is very slow. You may be using up a hosting provider that doesn't give you a lot of high performance. However, for the most part, if you find that your blog takes forever to load a particular post or your homepage or what have you, this could be the reason. So if you're just starting out, I recommend that you start out correctly. And if you're not starting out, you've been doing this for a bit, you can go back and sort of make some of these changes and see if that improves the performance of your blog. So today, what I would like to go over is just a couple of ideas for you on where to find images that are optimized already for your blog and then how to size them. The one thing that I have seen a lot, and it's obviously super, super common, is that a lot of people will post or use pictures or images that they take with their cell phone, whether that's a selfie or a picture of a, of a, I don't know, you're a restaurant, you're a food blogger, what have you, you took a picture. And those are great for sharing in places such as Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest because they already have in place something that will compress that picture so that obviously it doesn't take up as much room. Imagine all the people that are taking selfie, selfies and sharing them, right? However, when you take that picture and you add it to your blog, if your blog does not already have a really good picture compression system, that picture is typically just huge. So I want, I want to encourage you to continue taking selfies and continue taking pictures with your phone because you don't need professional pictures. You just need good quality pictures. But make sure you take them through a process of compression and optimization before you post them to your blog. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do today. I am going to show you how to do that. I am going to show you where to get the images and then where to resize them. So I am going to add an image to this blog. I am going to add an image up here to the top of the blog. And I am also going to add an image to as a featured image. I will first go to Pixabay. This is just straight up pixabay.com. This is, these are free images and they are royalty free, which means that you can use them. And what I do is I find the image, for example, uh, selfie is what I'm looking for, a person taking a selfie because it kind of has to do with the beginning of this post. And I look through here for the picture that I want. Now these pictures on top here are sponsored Shutterstock. So these are not going to be free. You just scroll down here and look for whatever image. I am not going to use one of these images for this particular blog post because it will help me sort of show you what I want to do with an image that is too large. And the good news about Pixabay is that these images are already optimized. So I want to show you both. So so let's say that I wanted to use this image right here. All I need to do is click on the image and select this free download. It is going to offer me several different sizes of images. Here's a very important step. Select the size that is the best fit for the space that you have in your blog the space where the image is gonna go. And typically you want your image to cover, for example, over here. 
I would want my image to cover the width of my blog. So if I went to the content, the article, the image goes from left to right, covers the width. And for my particular blog, this may be just a little bit different depending on your theme or how you have yours laid out. My images are 640 pixels wide. Visually, as you can see, if I made this image 900 or 1200 pixels wide, it will shrink it to meet whatever this width is anyway. So adding a picture or an image that is larger than 640, is just adding more KBs or MBs or gigabytes to how much room is gonna take than it's necessary. So what I am going to do with Pixabay is select this 640 by 425. Now, if your space is more like 700, then you'd obviously want to go up to the nearest one because you don't, you definitely don't want to stretch your images <laughs> to meet that because then you lose resolution. But if I wanted to use this image, because this is already a relatively small image, even this one is okay, right? Anything under 100 KB is fine. All I do is download it. It'll go to whatever your computer's folder is mine is just my downloads folder and then you go to you can go directly to your blog and upload that image there is nothing else you need to do with images from pixabay they are already optimized and in fact i encourage all of my customers to use free images for their blogs by using pixabay now i want to show you another place where you can find images now where pixabay was free this one is not free this is adobe stock photo and the reason why I love Adobe Stock Photo is because you get a much wider selection of pictures. What I don't love about Adobe Stock Photo is that regardless of the image that you pick, is going to be huge. Take a look at this image. It's 5,000 by 3,800. And really what they do is they provide, it the, they provide you with the largest possible image and resolution so that you can take that image and optimize it to your needs. So they're really not doing anything wrong. They're doing what they're supposed to so that you can use that image for print or for web or what have you instead of giving you different sizes of that image, right? They kind of leave it up to you. But when you buy something from a, a company such as Adobe Stock Photo or even Shutterstock or companies that you pay for, you have to do a little bit more work to make sure that your images are well optimized. So I just wanted to show you Adobe so that you could see another option for where to get images. If having this option happens to be in your budget, I highly recommend it. You do get 10 free images with your subscription so you can try it out before you buy anything. But these images are big enough that I can very easily show you how to size them. So whether you want to size an image because it's too big or because you need a smaller image in your blog for whatever reason, whether it's free or not free, what I do with my images is I take them into PicMonkey and I resize them there. So let's license this image first. And it's huge, right? You can see here that it's already in like 5 MB. That is way too big. If I took this image and I uploaded it to my blog, well, it would probably crash it. I mean, it's just, and that's how large some of the phone images that people are uploading to their blog are. So you really need to pay attention to that. Okay, so now I am going to go to PicMonkey and I am going to click on computer because this is the image I want to choose to edit. I'm going to my downloads and selecting that image, which is right here, click on open, and it's going to open this image in a size that I can see the whole thing. There it is. It's still pretty big. I mean, if you think about it, this is actually at 30% of the size of the image. So a 5,000 by 5,000 pixel image, is it's pretty large. You don't ever even need a 5,000 for any blog, no matter what theme you have. The largest image that you would ever need on a blog is more like 1920 wide and that's if you wanted to use that image as your uh, full width background and that's really about the largest that I can think of at the moment. So you want to open your image and then click on these bars here which are basic edits if you're not already there and go to resize 
and we are going to change the size to even smaller here. We are going to, remember, make it 640, and it's going to automatically adjust the height of the image. And if I wanted to have taken out any part of this picture, let's say before I cropped it, then I would have gone here to crop. So you don't want to crop to 650, you want to resize it, okay? So let's say that I wanted to only use this part of her. You can crop the image here and click apply. Okay, and then when you go to resize, it's still relatively big. So you want to make sure that you change the size to 640 and click apply and then go to save. Remember that it was five meg. Look at how little this is now. 89 KB, perfect. Anything under 100 is perfect. You can select the quality of the images here and if you go to Sean, then it would get a little bit larger, but this middle ground is perfect for your web images. I am going to change the name of this image and this is just a quick SEO tip. If you name your images according to one of the keywords that you want to optimize for in your blog, that improves your SEO. So I am going to call this image how to optimize your blog images. I think that's what it was called. We'll leave it at that. It's close enough. <laughs> I'm click on save to computer and it's going to, I am going to save this to my folder here and click on save. All right. And as far as I'm concerned from, for my needs, this is a well optimized image, but you can take it even a little further. And I'm going to show you this other step in case that you come across an image that you can't quite get down below 100 for some reason, and you don't really want to make it any smaller from a width and height perspective. You can also take an image over to tiny PNG and upload it here. I am going to go ahead and upload that image and it's gonna take it and try to compress it and make it even smaller. So normally this doesn't take away the resolution of the image. So I am going to go ahead and click on this download and download that re-optimized, super optimized image and use that. And then I am going to add it to my blog here. Click on add media upload files and I am going to find that resized image. I'm going to do both just so that you can see the difference. Okay. So here's the image that we used. Click on insert to post and here's the image. Now what I'm going to do is show you that the other image that I had optimized on pick monkey that was 98 KB. I'm going to add that one here so that you can see that even though they're both different sizes, it, they look exactly the same from a, from a viewing perspective. They didn't, it didn't lose resolution. So here's this image of copied pasted those keywords in here, full size. I'm going to insert and you can see, I mean, you, you can, they look exactly the same. So they're both 640 by, I don't remember how high it was. I think it was 347. One of them is 98 and the other one is 36 and they look exactly the same. So I am going to obviously use the smaller one. You don't have to go and do both all the time and compare. This was just to show you that they look exactly the same for the purposes of blogging. I think you're good with that. So 36 KB is this image, and that is what I highly recommend that you use when you upload stuff to your blog. Then I go down here and click on set featured image, and I am going to select that one image again and click it as my featured image. And what that does is it makes sure that it shows up just the way that my blog is designed. It makes sure that my index has an image with the blog at the, at the, in the homepage here. So that is my process for optimizing images. Again, 
Find your images from Pixabay as often as you can. You can even actually Google images. Just make sure that you filter by the copyrights so that you are using images that you have royalty rights to use. And once you get the image, make sure that you size them exactly to the space that you need on your blog. And you can do that by taking them into Pick Monkey and resizing them there. And if you don't get the the size that you need to from a how, how big they are perspective, not the width, the dimensions, but how large they are, you can take it one step further into tinypng.com and upload your image here. And once it's done compressing it, you can download it and add that to your blog. Uh, and before I forget, the other thing that you can also do and add that sort of replaces tiny this tiny PNG step is you can add a compression plugin to your WordPress blog. And the one that I use is WP Smush. I'll put that in the resources link below so that you can check that out. It's free and that only works for WordPress, WordPress. But this process right here works for any website, any website or blog that you're going to upload images to. You should make sure that they're optimized. I hope this helps and I will see you in the next tutorial or online very soon. Bye bye now.